The Bears trying to cement their status as a contender for 2024. They've come around. They've looked good. The Packers up and down this year. But Jordan Love, Peter, a great opportunity to distinguish himself from Aaron Rodgers. Win and in this year, something Aaron Rodgers was unable to do last year. Surely Jordan Love is well aware of that opportunity to do something that his predecessor failed to do and propel the Packers into the playoffs and and at least buy him a couple more years to get to wherever his ceiling is. They throw quarterbacks out so fast in the NFL now, and there was talk at one point this year Jordan Love was only going to get one year. He's earned another. He may earn another one after that if he can get the Packers to the playoffs. Minimum of another one after that if he gets the Packers to the playoffs this year. Whoever said Jordan Love was only going to have one uh, one year, first of all, had no idea what he, she is talking about. He was never only going to get one year unless he played like, you know, uh, the, uh, yeah. He there was, was never a moment get only where one. there was a moment no, where no. you got a vote of confidence from Mark Murphy. There was a Peter, Peter. There was a moment where it was tenuous. I'm not saying it was going to happen. There was a moment where it was feeling tenuous. There was. It might have felt I think tenuous, Mark Murphy said, I think Mark Ryan Murphy Gutekunst, said something like the rest of this season is critical for Jordan Love. There was some sort of statement that felt loaded, like, wow, hey, uh-oh, if he doesn't get it together, who knows what they're going to do next year. With all due respect to anybody who thought there was a chance there wouldn't be a second year for Jordan Love and most likely a third year, uh, I say I firmly, ardently disagree with you and there's nothing you can tell me about any press conference or anything that could convince me otherwise. Having said that, in the last half of the season, Jordan Love has had five or six very good games. Maybe not five or six games at the highest level of Aaron Rodgers. But as you look at it, six of his last seven games, uh, he's had over a 100 passer rating. Uh, His interceptions are way down. Mike, this is a guy who understood in midseason that he was being careless with the ball. And in the last seven games, he's only thrown one pick. So to me, I think he's gotten better as the year has gone on. And he enters next year as a rock-solid guy. And if you're the Packers, you have to say, regardless of what happens on Sunday, regardless, you have to say that we are maybe not deliriously happy, but you have to say, first of all, we were right to pick Jordan Love when we did, and it's turned out as well as we could have hoped. Brian Gutekunst was asked whether or not Love's future was uncertain upon the end of the season. He said, I hope not. I think we've got 10 games left. These are going to be a very important 10 games. What they've done with those 10 games has cemented his future. But Peter, I think it's fair to interpret that quote as acknowledging it was at least tenuous for Jordan Love halfway through the season. Because it was. It was. And now it's not. To his credit, it's not. And this is his best opportunity to prove that he's capable of doing what Aaron Rodgers was not capable of doing last year and giving the Packers a playoff berth. What they do with it, who knows. But, Peter, they they made the Vikings look like a JV team on Sunday night. We didn't talk much about that game earlier in the week because we didn't have a show on Monday. But... You know, the Vikings came into that game, they win that one, they win this weekend, they're in the playoffs. And they made the Vikings look like they had no business even being in the conversation. So uh, the Packers made that happen. The Packers are peaking at the right time. And the Packers, I don't know how dangerous they're going to be in the postseason if they get there, but they're one of those teams that it would be very easy to overlook. And I think it would be a mistake to overlook them if they get in. Without any question, Mike, when you have a quarterback who in the last half of the season, so his last seven games, he's 16 touchdowns, one interception. And, you know, so whatever happens on Sunday, 
He's going to play eight games the end of the season, and barring a disaster, he's going to have incredible numbers, some of the best numbers of any quarterback in football, maybe the best numbers of any quarterback in football over the last eight weeks of this season. And so what that tells me is the Packers right now, and again, look, maybe they'll get in and maybe they'll shock the world. But again, right now, you know, Mike, it won't be a shock. You know, the only game that they stepped in it in the last month or so, right, is that Monday night game against the Giants. I mean, think about it. You know, that game was an awful game for not just for Rodgers, but for the Packers. It was awful. But they haven't had another one of those games in almost two months. So to me... I look at it and I just say, you know, if that defense plays even at a, you know, somewhere between an 8 and 12 level in the NFL, you know, between the 8th and 12th best defense, they're going to have a chance no matter where they go. And I even mean Dallas. I think they're going to have a chance against anybody in the playoffs. And it was the Packers and Aaron Rodgers who beat the Cowboys in the divisional round several years ago, which was their best chance in Dallas to get to the NFC Championship game. Maybe the Packers get a chance to do it again. We take a break when we return. Our underdog picks for Week 18. That's next here on PFT Live. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.